Well, Dr. Bill, it's so, it's so obvious to me that the mentality of Americans on a whole, are, are, they're, they're definitely getting dumbed down. This country is definitely, without a doubt, getting dumbed down. I am so sick and tired of hearing about this, this uh, 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 Southern Hick family from Georgia, this obese family, and this with this annoying, stupid, honey boo boo little girl, this fat, obese little girl. It's about an obese family. It's idiotic, just like the Kardashians, except the Kardashians are stupid sluts. And then you have that other stupid, uh, those stupid reality shows that people love, like, what is it, Survivor? Where they all talk about each other behind each other's back. All, all these, most of these reality shows are for numbskulls. Now this Honey Boo Boo is so nauseating, I haven't heard anything funny. They're not cute, even though they think, that, that, you know, they think she's cute. It's just a stupid hick family. You know, the whole family is like obese. The mother is... Is, is terribly morbidly obese with a huge double chin and all, all everybody's talking about is this, this little fat kid honey boo boo but what is the object of the show I don't know because I don't know anything about this show no they just they just they just where are you watching this the crap? show the, you know this woman this family is making money hand over fist mm. based on a little a fat child going out and playing around her house and all the all the comical things that this child is saying what they're, station they're is making this on? money out of this. What station is this on? It's one of those uh, videos that went viral, viral on YouTube. You know, you know, like that stupid duck song that has like millions and millions and millions of views. Tens of millions. Tens of, people, of millions. I it's of, over a hundred million now. An absolutely <laughs> stupid, imbecilic, retarded song, the duck song. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is a anything imbecilic, anything mindless goes viral. Has tons and tons and tons of, of views. Now this fat family is making money off of this annoying little fat kid, this honey boo boo. And, and it's sickening. Just the, This is the mentality of, of America. This is probably the same mentality that, that, that does not care about educating their minds or listening to politics. Oh no, they just want Look, I can understand if they're hedonistic in this country and they just want to feel good and party, you know, whatever. I can understand those people because maybe they do not have the mentality for politics or for science. But to call something so stupid entertainment is, is, is ridiculous. It's insane, man. It shows you how bad things are wherein people have to live vicariously through the lives of other people. Uh, like the show with the uh, stage mothers that are always yelling and pushing their, daughters, yes. their little daughters to sing and dance on stage, wear makeup like an adult, which incidentally is not a, not a wise decision with all the pedophiles out there. Mm -hmm. they, and they're yelling at these poor little girls and bringing them to tears. Look, these little girls have only one childhood. And their childhood is is going to go really fast. Before you know it, their childhood is gone forever. Let the kids experience a childhood. Let them play. Let them have fun. Why do they have to have this these goals to succeed and push when they're little? <coughs> Excuse me. Why must they uh, uh, be? under the microscope of the, this, this fat overbearing teacher of dance, whatever she is, or, you know, yelling, everybody's yelling at these little girls to, to dance better, to sing better, to practice more, to succeed. Maybe these mothers had a dream of making it big and they never made it and they they're don't living, have what it takes. They're living through the child. So they're, they're, self, they're selfishly living vicariously through, through their the children and yeah. making their little children your little girl's mis miserable, absolutely miserable. It's child abuse, and uh, even an obese child is a form of child abuse. But let the kids have a childhood. Let them experience something precious that will go very quickly. 
you know, but no, these selfish mothers are yelling and, and demanding that their children do better and perform better. It's just absolutely selfish. Oh, by the way, happy vernal or autumnal equinox. Today happens to be the first day of autumn, and uh, that is why I am wearing my uh, traditional autumn Halloween-y uh, black and orange court jester's hat to celebrate the first uh, day of autumn. And I would like to also say happy birthday to a very old friend of mine who is on my Facebook uh, groups. Uh, she was named, when she was born, she was named after the Vernal Equinox because she was born on the Vernal Equinox and her first name is Vern. Okay, <coughs> and let me just get the information a little accurate here. Happy birthday to, uh, to Vern. Uh, Uvisian cool. of, of Long Island. Happy birthday, Vernal Equinox. It's autumn, finally. It's kind of warm out there, but breezy. Now, I um, I heard that um, from a Philippine uh, woman uh, working in Japan because the economy in the Philippines is horrible. So she, she's working in Japan. Now, Japan, you know, they subsidize your apartment. They pay for your health care and, and all that nice stuff. But the catch is they have to work very long hours. So can you escape from the, uh, the negativity of capitalism, even in the best situation? No. There always has to be a catch when it comes to capitalism. And the catch is... Japan takes care of you, uh, they pay you very well, but you're at their beck and call, you're on call. They, they make you work very long hours, six days or sometimes seven days a week. That's capitalism for you, there's always a catch, um, unfortunately. And uh, also, child rearing. I have a bone One to of the five taboos of American life. Yes. Well, I have a bone to pick with the modern uh, generation. What is it? The X, the X generation, Generation X, Who Generation what generation Y. Is anymore. Whatever. I don't know what they're calling them now, but the younger generation parents, especially the single mothers that are younger, they they are all afraid to say no to their children. Huh? No discipline whatsoever. They over overly coddle them when the child takes a tantrum and cries they they freak out they they have to run over to the kid and hug them embrace them and and, and like like something is wrong with the child and the, the mommy needs to console the kid no the kid is taking a tantrum and and she or he is playing a mind game with you the parent using the crying routine the oldest trick in the book laying that guilt trip on you you know like an like an old mother nags you and lays a guilt trip on you they you know the italian or the jewish mother tends to do that play the violin well the kids the kids violin is crying and taking a tantrum so you're doing the wrong thing by coddling them and you have to start learning how to say no to your kids because they they're growing up to be monsters obviously mm -hmm obviously now I want to revive as my one last uh, statement I want to revive my old topic of called the pussification of the American male now is pussification a real word probably not probably not but I have noticed with people I know and with acquaintances I know that um, once a woman, once a man lays pipe with a woman, once she spreads her legs and once they have uh, 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 intimate relations, for some reason some women who um, are on a power trip, who are control freaks, some women have a need to stick a red-hot branding iron 
on their so supposedly on their man's ass like the man is their property and they start nagging them and bossing them around and telling them what to do you can't why are you doing this why are you doing that don't do this don't do that you know they, the man cannot enjoy his interests and hobbies and he, he has to get authorization to do certain things that he enjoys doing and these men they're afraid to to debate the wives maybe because they're afraid that the the girlfriends or the wives will withhold sex from them and I know people personally that are like this um, you know, some of my friends in New Jersey are like this, and, and others are like this, too. Maybe that's the weapon. Maybe they're so, I mean, these guys are so desperate to get laid that they're afraid that their wives and girlfriends will punish them and withhold sex from them. So I guess that's the power that the women have over these, these dudes. But they're afraid, you know, to speak up. And, well, let old James here speak up for you. And I'm telling these women that tell you not to do what you want to do, or like not to do a show or be a guest on somebody's show, I'm saying this right now. Shut the hell up and leave your boyfriend or husband alone. Shut the hell up. Shut your big fat mouth up. Like, I'm on the phone with my brother. Am I... And my uh, sister-in-law's in the background. Ba 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 ba. I was on the phone phone with my uh, my friend Brian Slate when he was married, and his wife is in the background. Josephine. Ba 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 ba. It's like, and now my brother's two little daughters are yapping in the background, interrupting in our conversation. They're always in the background, bossing, bossing, nagging, nagging. It, it's really extremely annoying. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, it goes on and on. I can give you many examples. Um, grow a spine. Grow a real testosterone-enriched titanium backbone, guys, and stop being a man. Start being a man again. Now, this is one of the uh, one of the um, the drawbacks of liberals. Now, I'm a liberal, but <clears throat> I believe in balance. Liberals are afraid to lose approval of anyone. They want to be liked or loved by everyone. They need approval. So they, after a while, when a liberal gets married, they start to sound like a woman. Like, you know, this one guy, he's offended by the human sexuality that's posted on the group. That It was formerly the Truth Whispers. Now it's called Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Truth. And my food group is called, it's not called the, the Food and Beer Whispers, it's called Everything is Food. Named after the stupid song from the old Popeye musical with Robin Williams, you know, everything is food, food, food. Anyway, when other people are posting sexuality on it, oh, that offends them. That's very strange for a man to take offense to a very beautiful, young, scantily clad curvaceous young lady they're either gay or something's wrong with that with that picture so what I'm trying to say is man up grow a spine hopefully a titanium one like myself and you know cut the bullshit and to you ladies that are bossing your men around shut the hell up all right now I want to officially uh, welcome aboard my co-host and mentor, the very Pope of the Internet. And also, it happens to be Saturday, September 22nd, 2012. So I will officially welcome aboard my co-host. And the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. I welcome aboard the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. How are you feeling today, sir? Excellent. A week has gone by so fast. And we're, here is another 
exciting and, and action-packed, hopefully, or, or mostly very informative, hopefully. Well, it's always very informative and naturally controversial because when you tell the real hard-hitting truth, you are naturally controversial. <laughs> you know, and that's why I, um, you know, I admire certain people that were pioneers in broadcasting, like like a Howard Stern, you know, uh, uh, people that tell it like it is. Uh, George Carlin, may his soul rest in peace, he told it like it is when he did his comedy. People that told it like Lenny it is. Lenny Bruce? I, I was too young to... Beyond is before your time, but uh, Lenny Bruce was the pioneer. But what kind of material did Lenny Bruce use? Truthful material. He was smart? Absolutely. Absolutely. So he might have been the mentor of George Carlin. Correct. Ah. He looked up to him. Lenny Bruce spent many a night in jail. He spoke out with uh, on social issues? Really? I gotta look up Lenny Bruce on YouTube? Good idea. Good idea? Look him up on YouTube. Just, mm -hmm. just like I, I, I listened to FDR's second Bill of Rights speech, uh -huh. which was well worth listening to. Okay, let us sink. Which, which most people know nothing about. Yeah, nobody knows. Oh, because they don't, because the news media and, and schools, American academia doesn't tell anyone about FDR's second Bill of Rights Correct. speech. Well, you know, for conservatives those days, uh, those days are deep, dark, black. FDR. Deep, dark, and black? Well, FDR is like a demon. He's like a, a demon. He's like a patron saint to us progressive liberals. For crying out loud. They want to look at a demon. Look at Ronald Reagan. He's or, the cause. Or G. W. Or Bush. Is the cause of all of this New Deal. Oh, crap. New that Deal. That they are that they are washing away. Oh, right you, now. you mean so the so the so the poor and the middle class who have to work for a living, heaven forbid, they should have a decent, happy life. Well, Mr. Romney wrote them off the other day. The 47%. That's right. They caught him with that video. Wow. That's right. Well, let's see how much damage it does because the conservatives don't give a damn in the first place. So. I listened to that video and he flat out gave his true feelings about what he thought of the mainstream and the poor and the middle class. and You know what I mean? <laughs> so, let us... There's bound to be a Romney article in there somewhere. Probably. I'm sure stuff came out. At the Democratic National Convention, yeah. former President Bill Clinton commented that Republicans want to go back to the same old policies that got us in trouble. However, Clinton carries much of the blame for the policies that led to the financial meltdown of 2008-2009. Actually, it's 2007-2008. to 2008. Right. And the ensuing Great Recession. Number one, subprime mortgages were not an invention of former President George W. Bush. By 1995, in the middle of Clinton's presidency, the subprime loan market had reached a $90 billion. It doubled in the next three years. Number two, Clinton enacted two momentous deregulatory acts. Repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act of 1933. Ah, so that had provided significant regulatory firewalls between commercial banks, insurance companies, securities firms, and investment banks, and signing the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, uh -huh. which shielded the markets for derivatives from federal regulations. This act was a time bomb that hid growth of the collateralized debt obligation bubble. Number three, Clinton paved the way for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, which accelerated outsourcing of American jobs. Number four, 
Clinton's term coincided with a dramatic stock market bubble, during which price earnings ratios of technology stocks reached historic peaks and the level of margin debt borrowed from New York Stock Exchange member firms had risen to the highest percent of market value in 25. That market did not end well. By Clinton's final years in office, all of these trends had contributed to an ominous rise in delinquencies and foreclosures on subprime mortgage loans, particularly pronounced in urban America. History should deal harshly with Clinton. And I will add a little note that Clinton was one of the best Republic, Democratic Republican presidents we ever had. Thank you very much. That's so much for uh, for liberals versus conservatives in the two-party system. Correct. They are all corporatists. Corporatists. Correct. The two-party system is full of corrupt, controlled by corrupt corporatists. So we, we, what we need is a progressive, independent candidate, which we what don't... What we need is to do away with politics entirely. Most politicians were lawyers. Lawyers can be like a whore with a suit and tie, but at least with a prostitute, you know exactly what you're getting for your money. Lawyers can argue both sides, just like the people, the the people coming out of Harvard Business School who can argue both sides of an issue, which means they know nothing. Yeah. And nothing can ever get resolved. Well, they know how to, how to, how to delay and postpone uh, bills. Didn't the Republicans just take another vacation? Yeah, they're gone. Like for a month? They're gone. All they're doing, they, they took a long summer vacation. They didn't really accomplish. They maybe they passed one bill, and then they came no, back. No, they they stopped the uh, uh, jobs for vets bill. That's right, the jobs. Fifty-eight for vets. to forty in the Senate, not enough to override a filibuster. So so much for Obama controlling the United States, like these uh, these tea pub uh, tea thuglicans are always saying. It's everything's Obama's fault. Hey. The Congress is controlled by Republicans. The Senate, they don't have enough Democratic votes in the Senate. So, so much for Obama being guilty of all this, you know, all these wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. But they keep on blaming Obama, just like they, they friggin' torment and blame a, a, a Major League Baseball manager for his team not making it to the playoffs. I mean... And we must go back to the... To the turtle, Mitch McConnell, old turtle face, who blatantly said that uh, our job is to make sure that Obama is a one-term president. So much for bipartisanship. Correct. I don't know why Democrats, like back then, Nancy Pelosi and even Barack Obama, they kept on talking about getting along, bipartisanship. You just heard from Bitch McConnell, the t old turtle face, that they, their objective is that he is a one-term president. So why must they continuously uh, talk about bipartisanship? No, the, Amer the American people did not vote for bipartisanship. They voted for a complete and total change, the opposite of what G.W. Bush gave you. Not bipartisanship, not compromise. So there, there we go back to the liberal wanting to be accepted and approved and loved by everyone. It's just so sickening. It's such a hard, well, bad trade. Well, the treat. problem was that the, uh, the electorate voted in a bunch of Republicans, which made the problem worse. Nothing was going to get done yeah. because the tea thuglicans, the party, the tea partiers are not going to work with Obama. No, they're not. And pe and people, lemmings in America, continue to believe the conservative propaganda and the lies. Hey, you know how much heat I got even from friends 
by being truthful in my critiques on, on videos about food, restaurants, uh, 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 um, food um, celebrities on TV, food celebrities, giving honest critiques with, with factual basis behind my critiques. You know how much heat I got for being honest? By people that are supposed that are my friends, five hundred BTUs. People uh -huh. have a problem uh -huh. with somebody who really sinks their teeth into a subject and tells you the real hard-hitting truth. It it, it bothers them. It, it hits a raw nerve. It's like they're afraid of something. Uh -huh. Strange, isn't it? E even uh, uh, so that woman, uh, Flor uh, Flory Sabin, that personally knows Gary No. She admitted to me that her, uh, Mr. Um, Hernandez, I believe, another uh, Latin gentleman, and myself, we are, we are the only people that post comments on Gary Knoll's page and on the Progressive Radio Network page. Nobody else has the backbone, the intestinal fortitude, the gumption to post any comments of any kind. Nobody gets involved. Not even on Gary Knoll's pages, mm. and and she says it's it's really despicable how people don't get involved, and it's the same with ninety-five percent of you know our adaptive supporters pussies. Go along and get along. Who wants to do so? What? Well, that's the easy way out, right? Of course. They they don't want they don't want to fight tooth and nail for what's right. That's how bad people get to do what they want to do. Because good people don't stand up. Gary Noe is busting his ass out Vigilance. there. Vigilance. Vigilance. He's busting his ass, working long hours without much sleep to, to fight for the rights of the common man, the human race, you know, of various kinds. Uh, at one time he spoke mostly about health and nutrition, but now he's involved with everything, environment, politics, and he is working his ass off. The least you people can do. Okay, Progressive Radio Network gets millions and millions and millions of, of listeners. Get involved, man. Start posting some comments. Don't let only three people, including yours truly, James P. Madonna, be the only ones that post comments and do videos. I mean, I'm, I got all these reviews and I'm being truthful because life is not, you know, uh, it's not like Alice in Wonderland. It's not like the Land of Oz. It contains a, a lot of negativity. But because I, my truth involves negativity, I get heat for it. I get persecuted. I don't, I don't understand people. I can never be a psychologist because I, I, would, I, would, I would go bonkers. I, I, I well, don't. then you certainly should not have lived during the time... Of Jesus, because eleven of his apostles were martyred for the truth. Now, did you? The church but did went you, under persecution for the truth. Did you notice that when Jesus was on trial, he was asked to perform miracles to show us to prove who you re, who that you are who you say you are? And what did he do? He didn't perform any of them. Correct, because he did it. For a reason, because he remained hu hum you know, uh, hum uh, humility. Yeah, but he performed miracles before in front of. But he told them not to say anything about it. So he, he did not want, if if the if at the times he did those things, and all the people heard about him, his timetable would have been thrown off. The same thing with the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, God's confounded the languages because the end time timetable of God would have been thrown off because humans at that time working together with their creative minds and being under the 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 rule of Nimrod and all the evil that was in the world at the time. The end time would have been. They, yeah. they would have had. They would have had in no time at all. 
weapons of mass destruction. Hey, if, if, the, if the ancient library in Alexandria, Egypt was not destroyed, they had all of the, uh, the, the legendary Greek scientists' uh, inventions and, and works in there, you know, uh, technology would have been accelerated uh, into the future much faster. Of course. Knowledge would have would have been would have grown much faster. So Jesus knew what he was doing. He gave himself up for the crucifixion because he knew what his purpose was. Correct. So he didn't escape from uh, them. Pontius Pilate asked him, "Are you a king?" He said, "Yeah, I'm a king. You said it, but uh, not my my uh, kingdom is not of this world right, because so he was not." the king yet right so king of kings so pontius, Lord of Lord. pontius pilate found that amusing he like you know like this guy is is a kook well he actually found him innocent he washed his hands and said, yeah. hey well do what you want with this guy because i find no fault so it was it was the the pharisees that the jews it was the jews that the jews themselves you yeah. have barabbas or jesus take your pick yeah. so therefore at one time they liked the guy and then at another time, they, you know, they chose somebody else to be uh, not killed. <clears throat> but the point of that is, you know, you can't be uh, uh, assigning guilt because it was all preordained. Okay? That's why he came here in the first place. I mean, if, if Jesus wanted he to... He came to die. He could have told... Pay the penalty. He could have told the apostles... I foresee danger in the very near future. Let us leave uh, Israel or Jerusalem. Let us leave. We need to escape. They could have done that, but yeah. they didn't. Well, of course not, because he had told them many times that uh, what was coming. Right, but he told the apostles not to go running around spreading all this information about the miracles. And in other words, he and even the people that he he healed, he told them to to be quiet about it. Just like with the parables, the parables were not. The, told so that people would understand they were there to hide so if Jesus and the Apostles were around today they would not have uh, put videos on YouTube correct showing the miracles but they would using <coughs> television and radio and all of our uh, abilities to contact people they would go out and warn with the gospel the true gospel the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, it's a small flock. Okay? Because that was their job, is to warn. Not to evangelize. Yeah, like people I know. Since God was not saving the whole world at that time, and is not now. Like these, these right-wing fundamentalist zealot, born-again, so-called born-again Christians going around feeling that they, they're like... Marvel superheroes with spandex and a cape. They have to go around trying to save as many people as they can and, and, and bear witness and uh, um, um, edify. These are the words they use. Edify. Yeah. Edify. edify. Yeah. They can't edify themselves because they're involved in a false religion. It's a cult. So how, how are they going to... You know, they're, they're wasting their time, their energy, they're learning whatever they have, etc., in a false religion, which will, like in the old days, the people had to, they carried their gods in their pocket. They made them golden calves. They made statues of gods and goddesses and this, that, and the other. They never existed. Hey, this one particular. They can't do anything this, for you. No, this one particular person that loves to edify, bear witness, evangelize, whatever, preach. But doesn't uh, he, he chain smokes? I says, why don't you worry about? I says, if, you, if if everything's about Satan, everything's about Satan or God. I mean, everything, even the littlest thing to this person is either of Satan or or God. Every little thing, like a fanatic. I says, why don't you uh, ask? Uh, why don't you pray to uh, and quit the smoking habit? Because I said Satan will get to you through your cigarettes. Oh, he says, oh, you know, we're still, we, we're still living in the flesh in, in, in the world. We're still in the world. So I, that's, my, that's my worldly habit. I says, well... But, but what does God say? Be not of the world. Be not of the world. Right. 
because it's Satan's world. Like somebody else was justifying how people are in the world, in the business world, uh, selfishness, greed, uh, you know, uh, uh, phoniness, uh, decept, you know, uh, uh, deceit, backstabbing. Oh, this is how it is. I said everybody else is doing it, you know. So that doesn't mean you have to be part of the world because you're living in the world. Correct. You're supposed to be spiritual. You're supposed to be above that. So, you know, that was my answer. Speaking of all of that, sinners in the hands of an angry God yeah. was the title of a famous 18th century sermon. Folks with a negative self-image in the hands of a very, very nice God might well be the title of one of Joel Osteen's that hopeful message money bags himself along with good looks and a smile like a lighthouse beacon yeah which never stops it's always smiling has helped make Osteen one of the most successful televangelists in history a New York Times best-selling author whose weekly mega church sermons from Houston are broadcast in 100 countries. 100 countries? Wow. I feel like I'm called on to empower people to reach their God-given potential. See? Potential. Says Osteen. Well, only talks about money, prosperity, prosperity pre uh, preachers. Who will be signing his latest book, I Declare 31 Promises to Speak over your life I mean, at books and greetings in Northvale in New Jersey on Wednesday. How many books has he written so far? Doesn't that mean profit for Joel Osteen? He keeps on writing books, right? I would think so. Does he, I wonder how much of his millions are donated to poor starving children in the world. But along with Osteen's 30,000 strong congregation <laughs> at Lakewood Church and millions more viewers on TV. In Texas, right? The, the Red State. Yes. The Bible Belt. Have come critics from both the cynical left and the outraged right. On the one side, unsmiling journalists like the ones who interviewed him on 60 Minutes in 2009. <clears throat> who tend to suspect any successful TV preacher as a likely Elmer Gantry fleecing the faithful. Osteen says he understands their distrust. I'm not naive. When some people see me on television, they're skeptical. They think there's another guy after my money. You're, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. Oh, man. Far more virulent is the criticism from the religious right. A false teacher from Satan. Got that right, too. And the Antichrist puppet. Eh, I don't know about that, but... I'm it's typical of the battery acid hurled by angry fundamentalists online. Battery acid. They call Osteen a motivational speaker in preacher's clothing. Yeah, he's like uh, like a Tony, Ro Tony Robbins. Who is disinclined to talk about such favorite topics as sin, Satan, and eternal punishment. Well, since there is no such thing as eternal punishment, you know, that's nothing to talk about. There are certain things about him I admire. A church growth consultant said. But the other side is, is it a balanced spiritual diet to only talk about the positive? What's key for Osteen is to let people know that God is on their side. I get criticized by the real strict fundamentalists for not telling them to repent of their sins, he says. But I don't have the heart to beat people down. 
I think they're already beaten down by life. Osteen's niceness is one of the reasons he has so many followers. But it's also one of the reasons his teachings are liable to leave some people unsatisfied. Asked about homosexuality on Oprah's next chapter, he split the difference. Yes, it's a sin. But gay people can still get into heaven. And since the traditional concepts of heaven are not accurate and true, so therefore there's no place to go. Oh, well, the right-wing fundamentalists, they, most of them believe gay people are, are, are not saved at all. They're, they're, they're doomed. Well, they aren't. They aren't. No one is saved today, just as no one was saved yeah. back in the days of ancient Israel, so this except the elect. So these, uh, their self-righteous attitude that they're, they are going to be saved from the tribulation is a bunch of bunk. Fantasy. It's not in the Bible. Fantasy. Well, we just read here and we got two things so far that aren't in the Bible. Eternal punishment and, and the traditional concept of heaven where good people go when they die. That's what you mentioned on okay. my group to those two right-wing gentlemen. Correct. I mean, you're talking of the traditions of man. Correct. Go to the Bible. See what it has to say. But they're lazy. Anyway, his answer is not, won't please both sides. I'm not going to be a gay basher, he said. Even more problematic for Osteen is the prosperity gospel he said to preach. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Mark 10, verse 25. Mark 10, verse 25? Correct. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy and paste it to my group. Is a Bible verse that critics are apt to throw in the faces of upbeat preachers who emphasize God's plan for your personal success. Happily, the Bible is inexhaustible <coughs> and not always consistent. It's not consistent when you don't understand the red thread. Otherwise, it's quite consistent. Yeah. You say red thread, the fundamentalists say rightly divide. Everybody's got their little... What the hell does rightly divide have to do with red thread? Well, red thread means a, a story that is consistent throughout. Well, however, that's what they're since they, Isaiah they use it. Us. Yeah, they use it in term in, in regards to Bible interpretation, connecting parts of the Bible. The Bible interprets itself, and as Isaiah says, the Bible is not chronological. It is here a little and there a little. And you know what that requires? What? Work. Work to piece everything together. Because it's not laid out that way. It's a coded book. It has keys. And if you do not understand certain keys, you will not understand the Bible and the red thread. The red thread. Now, that was that, that, that verse earlier was Mark 10, uh, 25? Correct. Okay, gotcha. The camel. Yeah, the camel. Okay. And there ain't a cigarette. It's not a camel spider either that the uh, the, uh, the U.S. troops in Iraq were using as am amusement, fighting, fighting. They're 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 big. They're big spiders, sandy colored spiders with long legs. You wouldn't like them very much. They're very large. Larger than you think. Right. It's not that. I am come that you might have life, and have it more abundantly. John 10, verse 10. And I wish above all things that you may prosper. 3 John 1, verse 2. Uh -huh. There is part of Christianity that says you're supposed to suffer and be poor and downtrodden, Osteen says. I don't believe that's how God wants us to live. Oh, you don't want to live that way. I think he wants us to excel oh. and be happy and be a blessing to others. Happy? See, there's a key word. His happiness <laughs> is he wants to be filthy rich. In fact, 
Oral Roberts, God's formula for success and prosperity, was a friend of Osteen's father, a pastor. Osteen himself studied, but didn't graduate from Oral Roberts University. Even so, prosperity gospel is a term Osteen doesn't like. That's telling everybody God is going to make you rich, she says. I never do that. Oh no, not much. He also never solicits funds on the air like some TV preachers, although the people do respond spontaneously and send him money. And he sells books. And he says, and he makes millions more from his book sale. <laughs> he is said to be worth $40 million. I'm very curious to see uh, what Mr. Olstein's charitable contributions are, if any. What does draw him up short is the question, was Jesus poor? I never really thought about that, he says. It's a question, of course, that led to a schism in the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages. And it's still hotly argued about some people insisting that Jesus was next door to a homeless person. And some saying he was closer to a modern CEO. And some say he was he was married, too. That's garbage. Was that Mary Magdalene? That's garbage. False. It's on TV. They'd no kidding. It's part of the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code. Which is also a bunch of baloney. Or, or as in it, speaking of Da Vinci, more mortadella. Jesus. A bunch of mortadella. Will marry his church, which are collectively the flock. Correct. Christians, and that's in Revelation. So obviously, if he was married now, he would be committing adultery if he had a wife. You know what I'm saying? But when he marries his church, that would be adultery. Right. But his mission... Now, if he committed adultery, that would be, you know, against the Ten Commandments, and he wouldn't do that. So his mission on earth at that time was not to propagate, not to have a son or a daughter, no offspring. That was... No, because it would have interfered with the work. It took Jesus 30 years to learn before he went on his ministry of three and a half years. So, okay, you know? so he, he died. Remember, uh, all right. God is an alien. This is the concept that uh, people don't grasp. God is an alien, an alien form of life, a spirit being. So, the personage, or the personage spiritual person of the Godhead who became Jesus gave up his spirituality, his divinity, to become a human. And in becoming a human, he had, of course, to acclimate himself to humanity whilst he was growing. But when they, in Genesis, when it said uh, Adam was made in God's image, what, what did that mean? If an, God image, is... an image is just an image. God has a head, he has two arms, he has two legs and a torso. But That's he's, all we know. But he's still alien, spiritual. But it's not a physical thing. No, no, no. It's okay. spiritual body. You know what I mean? So in other words, God didn't make man in the image of a dinosaur or a no. cow, and as the Bible says, is God, in, in when he created all these things, he created things after their kind. A cow after his kind or her kind. A dog after a dog kind. And a human being after a human being kind, but in the image of God. Were angels created before Adam? Or Absolutely. After? Okay, before, okay. They were, created, they were created before the universe was created, as you see in Job. Yeah, and if you read the, the description of angels, they're nothing like man's concept of what angels look like. 
They are beasts. They, they're they beasts. look like beasts and gargoyles. Beasts, gargoyles. They, 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 yeah, a mythical beasts is what they look like. The seraphs with six wings and two to cover the face. Come on, man. You know? And how about the beasts uh, up there by God's throne? And, 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 and the 24 elders and everything. What the hell do they look like? I mean, they, you know. Look at the variety. Oh, the, the cherubims? The, well, the, they're, 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 uh, the, uh, they're angels. The, 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 uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant with the, the two That's cherubims. Ark angels. Those, those are arcs. Arch angels. Archie angels. They, you, uh, you, know. you know the same arc Top angels? Dogs. The same archangels are, are recognized by name uh, by uh, Islam. Mikael, uh, Gabriel. Just because. Jibril, Jibril is Gabriel. Just because uh, a religion or something incorporates one part of the truth does not make it wholly truthful. And I'm not singling out Islam. I'm talking about all of them. Right. Well, well, because if you go through all the false Christian religions and etc., they may take one little truth. Yeah. Well, but that doesn't help but any. But Muhammad's you writings still have the wrong God. Muhammad's writings from the archangel Jibril was destroyed by the Caliph. Caliph Uthman. Uthman. The third Caliph after the death of Muhammad. Destroyed. All Qurans of today. Mm -hmm are based on his expurgated version of the Quran. So the original... There is no original. The original's lost. Correct. Okay. It was censored, expurgated. Let me finish here because... Yeah, finish this article. And we go on break. Oh, well, well, let me just add this thing where we said that J was Jesus poor or a modern CEO or something like that. Jesus was a carpenter. So he made his living as a carpenter. Right. Joseph, I wouldn't say he was rich. Joseph, he wasn't, but he came from a well-to-do uh, well family. I mean, people have this idea because he was born in a manger that he, they were poor. No, they weren't poor. They went to uh, uh, Bethlehem for to uh, be you know, involved in the census. But there was no room. Everything was filled up. That's why they were in the manger, not because they couldn't afford a hotel room. So he wasn't poor, per se. But when he went on the road with the Twelve Apostles as a rock and roll band, then they gathered money from those who supported them. Because when you're on the road, you don't have a decent job that you go to every day. Well, if you're a rock and roll star in, in America or in the, in the United Kingdom, you got better than, than a decent job. Yeah, but somebody has already uh, programmed you for many uh, shows. See? But the Jesus didn't have his shows programmed in advance. You know, they went from town to town or whatever the thing and they... Let me tell you. If I was to start life over again, I would, I would tell my mother, and and Give me well, a hit, uh, my baby. father took off when I was five years old. But take take me to get electric guitar lessons, uh -huh. because talk about getting chicks and making a fortune. If you could play a, electric guitar, like like Hendrix or or Frank Zappa, forget it, man. You have paradise in your life. How about like Brad Paisley? He invented the pattern on the, on the shirts. Paisley, right? Or that guy in... Uh, Who's Brad Paisley? Led Zeppelin. The list goes on and on. I've heard... Hosting, for one, isn't about to ask for Jesus' tax returns. <sighs> I've heard that when he was arrested and crucified, oh, okay. they sold his robe. Ah. And it was seamless. The Shroud of Turin. And I've heard people say, that was a fine robe that they sold. But I never really thought about whether he was poor or not. I think his needs were supplied. 
So he wasn't poor. Okay, per se. Even in the wedding feast, you know, because Jesus mm -hmm. was the older uh, of the family, mm -hmm. and they ran out of wine. Okay? And he magically, he was upset with his mother. He was upset with his, his mother Mary because my mother Mary came to him and said, we ran out of wine. In other words, she wanted Jesus to perform a miracle, which he did reluctantly as hearkening back to what you were saying before, remember? When we were saying about he could have done this, that, and the other thing to avoid his death and all this other stuff. But he wasn't here to be big what's, what's superstar. That, what's that, what's that, uh, that uh, illusionist to uh, uh, oh, uh, David Copperfield? David Copperfield. He was not a David Copperfield. In other words, he did not want to be, be Jesus Christ superstar. Correct. Jesus Christ superstar. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Da, 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 da. And is Very. that the reason why you uh, you don't want to be interviewed by any, That's correct. any big shots? That's and, correct. And go super mainstream? God does not like the powerful, the well-to-do. Yeah. These people, they are full of themselves. What if... God likes babies. And when I say babies, I'm talking about a person who's educable. Yeah, and, and, and he likes babes and, and the hum, the and humility. What he about likes humility? What about uh, innocent animals, creatures of the earth? Animals are animals. Animals are animals. Okay, they are not. Uh, well, some of them can. They're not some. Some of them bond with you. They show love, though. Well, what the hell is that after doing anything? They're an animal. Is it possible to be um, a big superstar and be a real nice person at the same time? I don't think so. Do good? I don't think so because what what you said before. When you become something of that nature, you are focused on the moolah. You know, I've been reading... I've Therefore, been, that's your God. Uh, I've been reading a lot of um, posts and banners that are similar to that one from the Bible, or he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. There's a lot of other people that are quoting it in different words, but the, with the same meaning. Right. You hear because that, Romney? It, because it's, it, it ends up being idolatry. That which you are focused on becomes your God. It becomes your God. And God says in the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am a jealous God. So the money becomes a god to them. Correct. This is me prop. It is an imported black thorn, authentic, weapons grade uh, uh, shillelagh imported from Ireland. I enjoy waving it around. It helps me emphasize certain things. But uh, Dr. Bill, I got another message this week from the elitist 1% and the uh, Republican Party. Another message for America's poor oh and... Uh, homeless and you know veterans vet veterans and middle-class people that are losing their homes right soon to become poor and they, this is their message now wait a minute the, the Republicans message Republicans along with the elitist one percent corporate CEOs the troublemakers correct we are here to kill you Thank you very much. We are here to kill you. <laughs> it sounds like the uh, what is that group? Calling of, of the herd. No, the the, the aliens. Oh, the, the cyclones. I mean the Cylons. The Cylons. Battle Star Galactica. We are here to kill you. More we, are here, we are here to kill you. All right, we're gonna take a little break. It's time for. Dr. Bill's astronaut, astronomic. What the hell am I an astronaut now? 
since you're Aquarian, Aquarius, I'm thinking of the song Age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius, Aquarius. Anyway, it's time for his gastronomic delight, known as lunch. And then we'll do promo, and we will continue. I'm an expert at this. Had it since the 1980s. From Italy. Isn't it gorgeous? I really want to get a uh, Djembe drum from Africa. Goat skin drum and learn. Uh, I think I will be a very good percussionist. But with some of the people I know that have been aggravating me, I would like to be a Concussionist. <laughs> no, no, no. What he would like to do is play that game whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole? Whack-a-mole. Or yeah. like Mo Howard when he used to hit people on the head with yeah. the mallet? Yeah, yeah concussionist. Right. Very, very clever. Whack-a-mole. All right, Dr. Bill. Not Iron Rand. W women tend, by nature, women tend to be a lot more liberal than men, but when you have a Republican woman, not Iron Ran. You have a Medusa, a bitch. <clears throat> Without a doubt, a right-wing woman is is it goes against their their nature. It's like saying a, a politician is a, is a right-wing conservative gay person. It just doesn't go together. <clears throat> well, there are some. David Brock was, and he is no longer a conservative. Yeah. Well, he was voted. He was. He was promoting <clears throat> a philosophy that was against gay people. And he was the one who trashed Anita Hill in the Clarence Thomas Anita Hill affair. Okay? But he, re he was, repented. Was Anita, he repented. Did Anita Hill, was Anita Hill ever involved in an affair with Clarence Thomas? No. So it was. He refused it. So it was pure harassment. Okay, because sometimes, if somebody, if a man was dating or and having an affair with a woman, and then it ended, you know, she might, out of revenge, she might come back and scream harassment. But that would not apply because it's like it's obvious that the woman is trying to get revenge on the man. She's scorned in some way. You know, it is, so it's not cut and dry. I mean, you have to prove it. I mean, you know, uh, one person's word against the other doesn't prove harassment. <clears throat> she proved her case. Okay. He did not. But he won. Because he, he had... Uh, because, the, as Republicans what happened... Republicans behind them. With, with David Brock... David Brock wrote the book, The Propaganda, against the media Hill. The propaganda, the perception won out, not the truth. That's how it's done. Is that similar to if a woman dresses sexy and she gets raped, the Republicans would blame the woman and say it's her own fault, she asked for it? Mm -hmm. Instead of being covered up like an Amish woman, she was wearing a... Uh, uh, you know, a Fredericks of Hollywood outfit. Speaking of that, I believe our next article will involve the Amish. Oh, really? I think so. They can be quite, um, quite the ca the capitalists, uh, opp opportunists. But they, they are not ostentatious. When they have to be. They are hu humility. They 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 are humble. They like they like business. They like to go into business when. A fast buck well, is available to them. That's my example there. Is where you it. A, a false Christianity or a false religion or something like could take take a a one truth and run with it. When that I was, doesn't prove the whole conception what, is yeah. accurate. Here comes the ice cream. The ice cream truck with that jingle from uh, Snow White. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, 
and his bell. Hey, when the weather starts to get cold, we won't be hearing this this jabroni and his mm -hmm. music and his bell. Um, I used to go to the Meadowlands Flea Market by uh, Giant Stadium, our Super Bowl champion, New York Giants, that are off to a a good start. I salute them with my lucky shillelagh. Oh, wait a minute! Now that I... gave them luck when they won the, before they won the Super Bowl. Wait a minute. Is this the actual season, or are they still doing pregame? No, no, no. It, no, the season started. Oh, the season started. The NFL season? Yeah. Oh, it's been it's been going on. No, uh, I did not know that. Yeah. So anyway, the Meadowlands Flea Market. If you're gonna blast the song from your car, at least blast a real cool song. Don't blast a dorky, lame song like this character is blasting from his car. I think that's Spanish. Doesn't sound Spanish to me, man. Sounds like a stupid, dorky song. Anyway, uh, there was an Amish uh, person there. Um, whether or not they were really Amish, I don't know, but they were selling uh, jams and, you know, uh, jarred food items from Lancaster County at a very high price. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about, I don't know how Christian they are for charging such a high price for their, for their home farm fresh items, but, you know, they were selling like uh, shoe fly pies, which is, is a molasses pie. Well, maybe they're good capitalists. Very sweet, apparently, because mm -hmm. his prices were through the I, I can't say through the roof because it was, a, it was an outdoor flea market. But, and he was dressed like an Amish man. He had the, the beard without the mustache and he had the straw hat and the uh, the vest, you know, the dark clothes. And uh, whether or not he just dressed the part to make people think that, you know, to make it look more authentic as a selling point, selling gimmick, I have no idea. But his prices were pretty high. And also, the infamous puppy mills mm. that supply pet shops in New Jersey with dogs, with those poor puppies that were not healthy, they, uh, they found some of those puppy mills on Amish farms mm. in Lancaster County. So, uh, since the Amish are what you would call right-wing zealot fundamentalists, they're close to God and everybody else is not. And they're fanatics. They don't believe in newspapers, magazines, radios, and television in their house. Cars. And cars. They, they, they want to be shut off from the world. So they are right-wing fundamentalist zealots. You know, it's funny. But why get involved in such a dastardly business like puppy mills? Make a buck. Diabetes, uh, obesity, come and get it. Da, da, da. I don't know if you can hear it. Da, 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 da. That was from Snow White, I think. Come and get your your white sugar in a very delicious form. Anyway, what were you going to say about the Amish with the puppy mills and you know being a little materialistic there when it comes to business? right-wing fundamentalism? Well, I was going to say that they don't... They don't go for the cars. They go for the buggies. I don't remember any buggies in Jesus' time. No, well, no. Well, there so were, that kind of modernization they go for. But there were horses, though, Bill. Donkeys. They pulled, uh, you know, stuff. Yes, carts. Ch Chucho. Chuchos. Donkeys. We call an Italian. All right, let me get promo out of the way. This gentleman right here. See this guy? This is a self-portrait of my uh, co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. It, it is a fine watercolor painting. It was painted by Dr. Bill because he is a fine watercolor artist. Go to Google and type in the William J. Eisenman collection, and you will see the entire collection so far because he's got new paintings coming out in a slideshow you can also go to the newsletter censored facebook page and the entire album is there too 
If you see something you like, go to newslettercensor.com, ask him if the painting is still available, Dr. Bill. And if it is, you can acquire one, all right? Signed by William J. Eisenman, an authentic watercolor painting. This is the very foundation and backbone of our organization, Newsletter Censored. This is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization, is to get your free annual subscription. Or to edify yourself. Or to edify yourself. <laughs> All right. It, the best way to join us is to get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work by going to newslettercensored.com clicking on the printable order form and getting your free annual subscription with your gift um, there's more information in the newsletter than there is on our talk shows or on our websites it is the kind of information that most people are afraid to hear can you handle it uh, also when you're at newslettercensors.com, you will see Dr. Bill for president. Yes, he's running a third time as a progressive independent. And he will show you that removing corruption from politics is removing the money from politics and also how to write in a candidate. He'll teach you that too. But this is what we're all about, the newsletter newsletter censored and uh, it is now promoted on our new um, hard-hitting Facebook group which was formerly the truth whispers now it is called mega life 21 hard-hitting truth so go to newslettercensored.com now and get your subscription get it now hey. boy it must be a lot of kids out there buying ice cream right by the door now. yeah very obnoxious of him you know with that hey. song only trying to make a living okay here is the undisputed patron saint of all right-wing conservative Republicans Ronald Reagan with Ronald Ronald Reagan's uh, trickle-down economics which was never meant to work and never did work as he's urinating on the United States pistol down economics that works pistol pissing down pistol down and siphon up to the 1% elitist economics siphoning up the money to the fat cats works also but trickle down economics never worked okay it's it's bullshit and that's Ronald Reagan urinating on the United States. Your patron saint, the demon Reagan, who shifted the tax burden from the middle, uh, I'm sorry, shifted the tax burden from the rich to, to the middle class. That's right, you heard it right. In the 1980s. And the poor. He, he shifted the, the, the tax burden from the rich to the middle class and the poor. He's, if you, if you wanna, if, if you're not a lazy lemming, and you want to do your homework and research, you will find out that it was Reagan that did it, not the Democrats. It's not Obama's fault. It's not Clinton's fault. It was Reagan that shifted the tax burden onto you middle class people and the poor. And it was also Mr. Reagan, trickle down, who uh, <laughs> did away with antitrust laws which allowed your credit card companies to charge you yeah. astronomical and usurious uh, 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 APRs. Right. Well, he What's wasn't. There? Well, Reagan wasn't crazy about unions either, right? What, what was that? No, the, he wasn't. Uh, he didn't care for unions at all. The air, the air, However, the air traffic controllers. Remember that Michael, incident? Yes, but for many years he was he president done? of the Actors Screen Guild, a union. Yeah, that's right. He was the president of the Screen Actors Guild. And how come? Because he was a member, because that's how he was making money at the time, as a member of the Hollywood, you know, clan. He was, he was a motion picture 
star back then. B movies. And B movies. B movies. No A's. No but A's. but when it comes to making a buck. Bedtime for Bonzo. Nah. Was not an A. What I'm trying to say is when it comes to making a buck, a Republican would take the side of whoever gets him more money. So when he was an actor, he liked unions, the Screen Actors Guild. Then he became a politician and he... A right-wing politician. A right-wing politician. He was a Democrat. Oh, really? Yes. His family and himself loved the FDR until he became a right-winger. Because he acquired a lot more money? I believe so, because he always, he always would say that um, high taxes make the rich lazy because why should they make if the if I make ten dollars wait high taxes make the rich lazy because if they after they pay their 91 percent yeah on the mula why should they make any more when it all goes to the government 91 percent so it makes them lazy so it's better to tax the middle class and the poor? That's what they say. It's better to spread it around. See, but we didn't do that in the beginning in 1913 when we instituted the income tax. The income tax <sighs> was to be paid by those with moolah. Do you think and Arnold... The more moolah you had, the more you paid. Do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he first came to this country from Austria, you think he was a right-wing Republican when he first came over no. and he was struggling to, to make a living? No. No way. It's after he became a film star and, and won seven Mr. Olympias and became a movie star and became rich, then all of a sudden he ran for governor as a Republican. Now you see how people sell out where they came from for the, for the buck? The it's just like a uh, uh, famous uh, Food Channel chef, uh, Chef Simon. I think he's from Cleveland. Chef Michael Simon. Simon. The guy with the, the, huh? Michael Simon. Michael Simon sold out to the uh, toxic junk food company that mm. makes Lay's potato chips. Oh, yeah. Now, Chef Simon is advertising for Lay's potato chips. Selling out. One of the worst of the corrupted foods. Fritos, Frito-Lay, is Potato that the same chips. company? Don't they use partially hydrogenated trans fats? They did. They did. And cottonseed oil. Cottonseed cottons are, cottons, uh, plants are loaded with pesticides. What about palm? Palm oil? Not so bad? Uh, not so bad, I don't think. <coughs> what kind of insects, uh, you know, <coughs> eat up the palm tree? Palm, well, the best, the best oil for high temperature frying is cold oh, pressed coconut. Pe peanut. Coconut. I'm I'm not done yet. Peanut oil and coconut oil. Uh, by the way, they sell coconut oil at the National Wholesale Liquidators International Market. I think it's like a couple bucks for uh, for 16 ounces or something like that. Pounds. Something like that. <coughs> Not a bad price, but <clears throat> coconut oil for consumption is very healthy. I take it. Yeah. Or, organic coconut oil has um, um, has a lauric acid, which is the uh, I believe it's the ingredient in mother's milk that that builds the, viruses. The, builds the baby's immune system. Lauric acid, if I remember correctly. Anti antiviral. Antiviral. Okay. Sixteen Amish men. More Amish. Woo. Sixteen Amish men. Somebody doesn't want me to read this. Oh wow. Ben is so well, wrong. we're going au naturel. That's why you you're hearing the racket outside. But. Sixteen Amish men and women were convicted Thursday of hate crimes. Oh really? For a series of hair and beard cutting attacks <laughs> on fellow sect members in a religious dispute that offered a rare 
and sometimes lurid glimpse into the closed and usually self-regulated community of believers. I bet the perpetrators did nothing that's actually in the Bible. A federal jury found 66-year-old Samuel Mullet, Sr., the leader of the breakaway group, guilty of orchestrating the cuttings last fall in an attempt to shame mainstream members who he believed were straying from their beliefs. His followers were found guilty of carrying out the attacks, which terrorized the normally peaceful religious, religious settlement that aims to live simply and piously. Prosecutors and witnesses described how sons pulled their father out of bed and chopped off his beard in the moonlight. In the moonlight? And how women surrounded their mother-in-law and cut off two feet of her hair. Taking it down to the scalp in some places. Really? On the way? Prosecutors say they targeted hair because it carries spiritual significance in their faith. Same thing with the beards, right? The descendants face prison terms of 10 years or more. For cutting a beard off? After their January 24th census. 10 years for cutting somebody's hair off? What? what well, prosecutors that? plan to file a request today to revoke bond for defendants who had remained free pending the trial. It's a little severe. I mean, it's not like regular assault. It's not like, you know, putting somebody in a hospital. It's cutting hair off. Ten years for cutting somebody's hair off? All the defendants are members of Mullet Settlement that he founded in eastern Ohio, near the West Virginia Panhandle. Oh, that's right. There are Amish people in Ohio, as well as Pennsylvania. Federal officials said the verdicts would send a message about religious intolerance. Yeah, and, 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 and a lot of these um, man-made laws from organized religion are most likely not in the Bible. The victims in this case are members of a peaceful and traditional religion who simply wanted to be left to practice their religion in peace. U.S. Attorney Stephen Dettelbach said, Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the descendants denied them this basic right, mm -hmm. and they did so in the most violent way. Defense attorneys said the defendants were bewildered by the verdicts and said likely appeals would be based on a challenge to the hate crimes law. Attorney Rhonda Kotnick said the verdicts would destroy Mullet's community of about 25 families. The defendants, including six children, excuse me, six couples, have a total of about 50 children. Oh my gosh, so they don't believe in contraception. The community is going to be ripped apart. I don't know what's going to happen to all their children. The suspects had argued that the Amish are bound by different rules uh, guided by their religion and that the government had no place getting involved in what amounted to a family or a church dispute. Mm -hmm. Mullet wasn't accused of cutting anyone's hair, but prosecutors said he planned and encouraged his sons and the others, mocked the victims in jailhouse phone calls, and was given a paper bag stuffed with the hair of one victim. Oh gosh, all over chopping the hair off. One bishop told jurors Quite his chest-length beard was chopped to within one and a half inches of his chin. Poor thing. I really don't give a shit about their this supposed crime, but anyway, finish up the article. 
when four or five men dragged him out of his farmhouse in a late night home invasion. Do you give a shit about that? About a home invasion? About kidnapping? Yeah, I care about that. About violence perpetrated upon you? Yeah, I, I, except if it's like me hitting a, um, a Republican over the skull with my shillelagh. Otherwise, I, I, I'm against other forms of violence. Prosecutors told jurors that Mullet thought he was above the law. Oh, really? And free to discipline those who went against him based on his religious beliefs. So his religious beliefs, so he had a bat phone and a stovepipe to God. He's a despot. Like other right-wing zealot fundamentalists that we know. He's a despot. A little corporal. But he's using his counterfeit Christianity and, and speaking for God and passing judgment on behalf of God. Well, that's usually what despots do. They pass judgment, don't they? What Before a, his... A bunch of goofballs out there. See how American kids are? Before today? his arrest, he defended what he believes is his right to punish people who break church laws. Oh, really? Church law. Church law. Not necessarily a biblical law. You have your laws on the road and the town. If somebody doesn't obey them, you punish them. But I'm not allowed to punish the church people, Mullet said. said. The hair cuttings were a response to continuous criticism he'd received from other Amish religious leaders about being too strict, including shunning people in his own group. Defense attorneys acknowledge that the hair cuttings took place and that crimes were committed, but contend that prosecutors were overreaching by calling them hate crimes. Thank God it's over. I beg of you, please, are, there, are there any Romney articles about what he said about the poor people in America? The I would really like someone to explain to me what Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney was heard to say that is so wrong? Have you ever stood in a line at Bergen Social Services? Oh my God. I imagine it's horrible. My husband worked from the time he was 14 years old. He never missed a day and when he became completely disabled, Bound to a nursing home and out of funds? I tried to file for Medicaid. Out of funds, plural. When I arrived at social services offices, I was the only American. And the paperwork I had to produce had taken me weeks to find. Wow. This was only because we were a hard-working couple down on our luck due to extreme medical expenses. Thanks to the politicians in Washington, they were down on their luck. My husband unfortunately died before I will ever know if his Medicaid appeal was accepted. Wow. Appeal? He was turned down? I have stood in line behind people with food stamps, buying high-priced steaks, beer, and other totally non-essential items that my taxes are paying for. Beer? I bet they were buying, they could buy candy too. That's not food. I know people who are collecting disability and act laughing all the way to the bank. They of course are voting for President Obama. So again I ask, what did Romney say that was so despicable? I'm sick and tired of the liberal media in constantly depicting Romney and Republicans as being out of touch with reality. Liberal media doesn't exist. Reality is that uh. we need to change a very broken system that encourages people to live on the dole. On the dole, yeah. Another four years of Obama and we will all might end up there. Who's going to pay for that eventually? So. Well, geez, if, they, if she felt that way, why didn't she get rid of G.W. Bush? Who, who, 
I keep reminding people, got us into this mess. So this guy would rather take away the dole completely and have the poor just starve to death. I mean, that's their solution, the Republicans, is to take all social programs away from the poor and give more tax breaks to the rich. And, you know, of course there are some rot rotten apples in the, in the basket, you know, I mean, there are people, I mean, personally, I would not allow food stamps to be used to acquire candy or pet food or beer or whiskey or anything like that. Uh, it should be basic food. I mean, uh, the system's not perfect, but I mean, since the corporations, it, which are, which have the uh, the politicians in bed with them, since they insist on outsourcing all the American jobs and not paying their fair share in taxes, of course there's no real job market for the mainstream here in the United States. But they make it sound like there's jobs out there by by Romney calling the 47% like lazy moochers, freeloaders, good for nothing, whatever the hell he said. Victims. Victims. There's no jobs out there. You know what I mean? And whose fault is that? It's Washington. Wow. They got paid off. They, they accepted the, the bribes, right? Yeah, and they allow the corporations to do that. You don't have to allow the corporations to send jobs overseas. All you have to do is make a law. The Republicans are very good at making laws, uh, uh, you know, against uh, uh, your liberal stuff or your religious stuff. They have no problems with that. But hey. God forbid you make a law that is that is going to help the poor people and the middle class, and you are persona non grata. Hey, Nancy Reagan used to say, "Just say no to drugs." What's wrong with saying? No just, to the rich. Just say no to lobbyists. <laughs> or just say no to corporate CEOs. Because then the lobbyists will say no to you. And you will not get the moolah for your campaign. That's where the problem is. That's Correct. corruption. Money, corruption. That's the problem. What man. is that? What's the biblical quote? As the nail. Man, let's do it right. Yeah. Read, read it right from the newsletter. Well, well, it happens to be the exact quote, yeah, yeah, yeah. people. Excuse me, you jabronis, while I put, glasses, put on my reading glasses. For those of you that are have something to say about my reading glasses, I have a, a terrible itch in the middle of my forehead. Excuse me while I scratch it. Oh, thank oh you. Oh, boy. Oh, and also, if you don't like my my autumn first day of autumn, vernal equinox, uh, um, official court justice hat, I have more of an itch in my middle forehead. All right, excuse me. The ragweed count is kind of high. Well, uh, there might be a little more to this in the actual chapter, but it, it says here, um, as quote, as the nail sticks to the stone, so sin sticks to buying and selling. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 27 verse 2. He that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Well, there's actually a little more to this, but that that's pretty much it. Proverbs chapter 28 um, verse 20. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that gives to the rich shall surely come to want. Shall surely come to want. Proverbs. Is uh, tax cuts for the rich giving to the rich? Yes. Thank you. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 16. And don't forget that Matthew 10 about... 10-10? Ten, ten? About... Uh, no. 10... Uh, a lot. 25? Ma Matthew 10, verse 25. Uh, uh, getting, getting a rich man into heaven is impossible, like passing a camel through the eye of a needle. Right. Something to that effect. And then we have um, 
Yeah, so this is proof that God is definitely not a conservative capitalist. I mean... God is not a respecter of persons. He is no. not political at all. No, he's not Period. political. So as far as Republicans going around saying that like, God is on their side and that they are real Christians, that is a bold-faced lie. Democrats are demons yeah. and baby killers. And yeah. secular humanists, Com complete, et cetera, et cetera. Complete, total lie. A complete <laughs> seeing the uh, sliver in the other guy's eye and not the beam in your own. Yeah, we're throwing stones in a glass house. And as this lady from this letter that we just read, she's attacking her own poor. I know what she's up in to. In support of the big boy. I know what she's doing. I bet she's white and she is really putting the blame on the poor minorities that are applying for social just services. Like just, just like, like her. her. Yeah. So she's using her racism to put blame on them, the immigrants of color, which they do in the South. In, oh. in Arizona, Alabama, Texas, they like to put the blame on the immigrants of color. That's what I bet this woman's doing. I bet her and her husband, or her late husband, I bet they're white. So, yeah, she's white. Yeah, so that's what uh, Republican uh, middle-class lemmings, uh, Tea Party uh, voters. Well, that's what they have. They do that. They blame everything. They blame everything on the immigrant of color. They have brainwashed these people, racists, <clears throat> to vote against their own interests. They that's fell what for they it. Do. They fall. Of course, they fall. Not You're you. You're gonna fall. What? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. But since that's the, since that's the, the old saying. but since the Republicans use the uh, Joseph Goebbels Nazi Germany technique of repeating a lie often enough until it's accepted as truth, you know it kind of shows us it kind of shows the world just how advanced and deep you and I are. If all these people are fooled by the lie, like the ones well, that don't have nothing to do with being advanced. Well, it has to do with being deceived. Well, I did. I didn't vote in a Republican Congress. They did. You didn't vote in a Republican Congress. Hell no. Now, what's this deal that some states are allowed to vote early? Early, early like Florida? Is that because Florida is so fucked up? I have no <laughs> idea why early voting. Historically? I, 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 haven't, uh, I don't know why they vote early. I see no ad advantage to it. Why not just uh, change the day? Change the day to a weekend. You know, I it's saw I saw what the ballot machine looks like. That you know, back when Bush defeated Al Gore, supposedly, it's pathetic. Florida's piece of crap voting toy. It looked like a little friggin' box from a toy store. Well, um, what a joke. Well. Um, Mr. Gray Palast and uh, I think Harvey Wasserman yeah. were on the Gary Null uh, Progressive Commentary Hour mm -hmm. on September the 17th, 2012, about that subject, how Bush, uh, how they illegally won the both elections, Kerry and, uh, yeah. and Gore. Right. How they, you know, stole those both elections. But... I go to the Progressive Radio Network. I can't find archived shows of any nature. Wait. They have specials that you can listen to. And is that it? You're talking about Gary Null? Yes. I have the link on my desktop to Gary Null's archive shows. I've been there. I'm saying I can. I'm talking about the website. Yeah. The web designer has not designed these things into the website. That's my point. Okay? Could you do, now, please do me a big favor. Please. please. Because I, I, I'm trying to explain this to Flory Sabin. Could you please, when, you, uh, when you're on Facebook, could you please 
type this on the holistic health talk page because I do not know how to go to the holistic health talk page well you remember it's on um, but I do not participate whatever doesn't appear on my wall okay does not exist for me all right you know what I mean all right I'll send it I to do you. not uh, you know, go around looking at this, that, and the other things and groups or stuff. No, like because that. I was trying. She's telling me that Gary No is so fussy he won't allow any incompetence. But but I've seen incompetence. Well, let me finish my story. Uh, finish I don't story. know if it has to do with incompetence or what. So there was nothing on the Progressive Radio Network website. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Gary No dot com. Um. That's his. Looking around for something to direct me to a show mm. that I was interested in. So I went back to the Progressive Radio Network and I typed in the search uh, field mm -hmm. um, Progressive Radio uh, Commentary Hour, uh, uh, September 17th, and 2012, and I got nothing. I got nothing. Now what the hell? The show's not even, what, a week old? Not even a week. Did you try to backtrack on the archive page? I didn't get to the archive. I told you it's not on the website. No, it's it not. It's not there. It's not. There's a thing, it's a progressive uh, commentary hour. Clicked on that. Okay. Specials. This is what I'll do. I will put his archive page link on your Facebook page page. Just send it in an email. Are you going to pay attention to it? An email? An email. Don't you look at your own profile page? What the hell do you do when you log into Facebook? I come up what on you, my you profile. What, you jerk off? My profile page, and I immediately go to my home page. I mean, there's a lot of good then stuff. There's a lot of good stuff on Facebook. The wall. And that's it. And then I check for my Texas Hold'em oh, uh, chips Texas Hold that my buddies send me. And I click on them. Uh, and I send chips back to my buddies. With all the fucking, with all the serious stuff that's on the internet, Damn. this guy goes online and plays games. I didn't say I played it. I said I took my oh. chips and I, 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 I accumulated them into my chip file. Good. Which is over four million. Four million what? Chips. What do you? Do? What? What does it? That, what does it mean in terms of actual money? Actual money. What is it? This is play money. It, it remains to be play money That's forever. Correct. Forever. Correct. It doesn't turn into real money, like Farmville money. No, it's a little better in Farmville. Because you can't sense. you can't cash in Farmville money. It's it's worthless. You can't cash it in, and you can't buy anything after a certain period of time. But Facebook wants you to spend money on the games. Of course. Capitalism. Of course. Usury. How do you think Mr. Zuckerberg is making his move? That big nose, that hawk nose, little bastard, punk. I heard he stole a lot of the ideas that inspired him to make Facebook from a, a college roommate he had an Indian gentleman that was his roommate, and his roommate has come, his ex-roommate has come forth with the truth that he stole. Kind of sounds like Bill Gates that stole from Steve Jobs when they were in school. You wanted to hear about Romney. Yes, go ahead. Now this is pretty serious when a little sleazy punk steals ideas from somebody else and, and and turns it's the it American way. and parlays it into a fortune. That's, it's the American way. That's dishonest. It's, it's sleazy, right? That's the American way. Well, the American way is sleazy then. It's the American way. Then it's sleazy then. Are but you the American Are you embracing it? I don't care if it's the American way. I'm explaining it. All right. It's the American way. It's sleazy. That's how many have gotten ahead. It's ill-gotten gains. Now, yeah, well, who's going to punish that? When you, by your ill-gotten gains, have gained the power and the moolah. 
Now who's going to come against you? Right. And then you have this photograph in front of a magazine with Oprah Winfrey with her hand on 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 Bill Gates' shoulder and on Warren Buffett's shoulder, her other hand, and she's smiling from ear to ear. She's another one, I'm you know. I'm a billionaire too? Is that what you're Yeah, saying? something like that. Of course, oh. I'm sure all the gifts that Oprah gave out came from sponsors. They, 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 they didn't come out of her pocket. That's correct. Capitalists. I would wager that in that room of donors, listening to Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney, in the spring, all received some sort of corporate welfare. Benefited from designer legislation that saved their businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. received government secured business loans, or, like Romney, inherited great wealth. This is the Ayn Rand simplistic view that these people are the movers and shakers, hard workers, economy saver foundations of our society. Yeah, job creators. They consider themselves entitled, not moochers. Entitled. Oh, but the little guy is not entitled to uh, a, a, a good, complete, free education and, and decent health care. Oh, the little, the little guy's guy not entitled to that, right? Is entitled. The little guy is entitled to a job that I will determine how much he earns, when he works, etc., etc. That's all the little guy is entitled to. Slavery. Short of slavery. A word arose by any other name is still arose. Well. Well, then maybe the fat cat needs to be taken out. R Candidate Romney yeah. shows no understanding of com or compassion for the majority of citizens he hopes to represent. Obviously. With Mitt Romney doing a rather poorly in the composite polls, particularly in the critical swing states, Prominent Republicans have been scrambling to offer much needed critique and advice on how to run his campaign. Romney promises to sharpen his focus and let people know exactly what he can, what we can expect from a Romney presidency. To save everyone some time, while Romney sorts out his 50-something point plan, I thought I'd offer a quick synopsis. Number one, additional deficit busting trillion dollar tax cuts for the country club crowd. Despite their federal income and capital gains taxes at the lowest levels since Herbert Hoover. Number two, deregulate. Something I know the likes of Gordon Gecko could really get behind. I'm sure the families of those killed on the deep water horizon and the upper big branch mine will appreciate weakening those pesky safety regulations. Mm -hmm. And number three, with the war in Iraq over and Afghanistan winding down, they'll use those spare trillions to attack another country in the Mideast because the last two worked out so well. Satire. Satire cartoon. I was being satiric. He was being Oh, satiric. he was being satirical. The last two worked out so well. It's a pretty good article. Piece of the crap. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney is driven by bottom line statistics. He's best suited to be the CEO of an organization whose goal is to make millions of dollars for the investors of those businesses, not to create millions of jobs for working class people who can then feed, house, clothe, and educate their families. If all those jobs he created really existed, 
we'd be hearing about him. Yeah. Using fewer people to do more work for less money is his business ethic. Yeah, the state and federal employment uh, um, job search websites would be coming up with tons of jobs if all these jobs were here. Remember, I asked the question in this new article, Angels of Light, why we cannot tax the rich? But we can tax the unemployed. That's pretty smart. Well, that's a good question. It's pretty telling, isn't it? Yeah, interesting. You cannot tax the rich. Taxing the rich is taboo, but taxing the unemployed is fine. Right. According to the corporatist right wingers in Washington, and I'm sh I'm sure if you have a Republican governor he, that he or she feels the same way. Romney is someone who uses people for what they can bring to the table and discards them once his purpose has been served. We've all, <coughs> excuse me, we've all worked for such people one time or another. And we all know what it feels like to be used in that way. The Republican Party is driven by an unbridled obsession to regain control of the White House with barely a pretense of acting for the good of the people. Is it any wonder then that the GOP has spawned a candidate the party truly deserves to run for the nation's highest office? I wonder if those who spent the last four years vilifying President Obama can see the irony those collecting Social Security and Medicare who pay no income tax and plan to vote for Romney, he thinks they're all deadbeats. Well, maybe they will have the president they deserve. Yeah, well, the problem is all the good people are going to suffer too. Bingo! With the assholes. <laughs> you know? When the scoundrels get what they deserve, when it comes to political leaders, all the good people will suffer. Mitt Romney has realized that he is losing his bid to unseat President Obama. Even Republican focus group expert pollster Frank Luntz has acknowledged that the electoral vote is not nearly as close as the popular vote when he stated the other day that Romney's path to 270 electoral votes is very difficult. So Romney has doubled down on his strategy of making ludicrous promises and counting on the stupidity of the American voter not to see through their ridiculous nature. A few days ago, Romney made two such promises. He said he would lower taxes on the middle class by reducing the capital gains, interest, and dividends tax rates. They all benefit the rich, not the middle class. Sounds great, except very few members of the middle class rely on capital gains or dividend income. Bingo. He said he would rescind Obamacare, but keep its popular provisions such as the one forcing insurance companies to cover customers with pre-existing conditions. This promise is complete nonsense. Because the only reason the health insurance companies agreed to cover those with pre-existing conditions was the inclusion of the individual mandate in the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. This mandate gave the insurers millions of new and mostly healthy customers. No individual mandates. No coverage of pre-existing conditions. Romney's promise is garbage. Of course, it's garbage, you know, and, uh, well, more, more importantly than just not voting for a Republican this November is also not voting for a Republican 
for Congress or the Senate. We need to get a majority, Democrat majority. You gotta get people in, in there who are gonna work with the next president. Correct. If he's Obama. And forget about bipartisanship. Or Dr. Bill. And forget about bipartisanship. It's not gonna work. Now, you know what's funny? I was li I was watching a commercial. He never worked the way for FDR either. He had to have the Democrats in there to get Social Security and et cetera. Same with Lyndon Johnson with Medicare. Don't they learn from history, the Democrats, that, bipar they that bipartisanship doesn't work? Don't they learn from history? I, th I don't think anybody learns from history. What was it? There? Who, who was sent was sentenced? Who, who he who does sentence? not learn from history yeah, is doomed to repeat it. What the hell is he? Sen, 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 Seneca or something? Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He's doomed to repeat it. Now, I was listening to um, Linda McMahon, the, the wife of Vince McMahon of the WWE. Who was she, running for the Senate in she, Connecticut. In, in Connecticut. 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 Uh, this November. And I thought it was amusing. She, she was accusing her Democratic opponent for having a history of cutting defense jobs in oh. Connecticut. Well, that's part of the problem, is the defense budget, isn't it? Yeah, a big part of the problem. How, why is cutting defense jobs a bad thing, Linda McMahon? Since, as I show in the new issue of Censored, the military budget takes up 60% of the budget <laughs> when all things are accounted for. I don't blame him for cutting defense jobs. Defense jobs should be cut. The defense and should be it's, trimmed. It's a misnomer to be call it the defense budget. Defense against because who? Because we are not defending our shores. We are being imperialistic and going around the world. Right. Defeating and killing other people. And occupying. And occupying and their land. colonizing and stealing their land. And we have we have over 1,000 bases around the world. Right, 100, yeah. Stealing their oil. These people don't want to be occupied. Look at the, did you see the protesting in, in Pakistan? Now? Two women were arrested. Yeah. On prostitution charges. Uh-huh. Monday after police found an internet advertisement with photos and a phone number of a borough resident who had posted them on the web to attract customers. Should be legalized, like marijuana. The arrest of borough resident Stephanie Galvanes, 25, and Astrid Alvarez, 20, of the Bronx, stemmed from an undercover operation. After discovering the internet ad, undercover officers contacted Galavane and arranged to meet her. Don't, don't these undercover cops have anything better to do like, like, for instance, go after big kingpin uh, drug dealers uh, or go after gangs. But no, they, they got to go guns. after pr prostitutes of like a victimless crime. Shouldn't even be a crime. Marijuana and prostitution should not be crimes. They have, this is a right wing. Uh, um, well, they're Christianizing. Right wing, a, a puritanical That's good. attitude. Puritanical. Puritanical. It's a Christianizing of them. Christianizing they don't them? want to be Christianized. Who, who's Christianity? Who, who's Bible? Their false Christianity. Their Bible. Which not, they have gotten into law. Not the real Bible. Okay. They have gotten it into law. Is this the same idiot false Christianity that says that a fertilized egg is a human being? Correct. Religiousness. And what's also said back in the Nicene so, uh, Council under Emperor Constantine. That Sunday, the first day of the week is the Sabbath. So they'll and which also made Christmas and Easter celebratory feasts within the 
quote Christian unquote church. So they 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 won't keep the true Sabbath, and they they worship money, which is idolatry. But they'll turn around and they'll tell you that uh, a fertilized egg is a person, and uh, they'll tell you that a corporation is a person. Or tell a woman what to do with her body. And tell a woman what to do with her own body. Correct. And have and and, and tell people they can't masturbate like that. <gasps> like that, that too. Like that idiot, uh, uh, Christine O'Donnell, Republican from the state of Delaware. The officers arranged to meet her at her Oakwood Avenue home. Boy, that was a mistake. At the home? At her own home? <coughs> what? It's even it's even more Why did you go to the Burger King? It's even more nobody's damn business. <laughs> Honestly, in the privacy of your own home and it's your own body, it's not a, it's no cops or no politicians fucking business. If a woman chooses to do something with her own body in the privacy of her own home. Yeah, but she don't bring people from the internet to her own home. She was advertising. She was soliciting. But you don't bring them to your own home. No, is that kind of you like... You meet them at a munch down at the Burger King. You rent out a, a motel room. Once you've agreed on your whatever you're going to do. It's like my uncle, my uncle Artie from Italy used to say, you don't eat where you shit and you don't shit where you eat. <laughs> you know, it's your, it's your residence. Now, every, every John... Every time Dick and Harry knows exactly where you live, so you'll have, you have no privacy whatsoever, right? Or blackmail, or killing. And then, what about your neighbors? Your neighbors will 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 see all these gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, coming in and out of your house. Coming. Coming. Get it? Coming in and out of your home. Once at home. <laughs> The officers were allegedly offered sexually related acts for yeah. compensation. What else is new? Police charged Alvarez with one count of engaging in prostitution and released her on her own recognizance. Mm -hmm. Galavanes was charged with one count of engaging in prostitution and three counts of promoting prostitution. She was released after posting $5,000 bail. The women are scheduled to appear in Bogota Municipal Court in Little Ferry, September the 27th. 2012, not far from us. Not far, not far at all. Little Ferry, and there are no ferry boats in Little Ferry, New Jersey, not that I know of. Oh boy, you got any... One more! Political? 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 Well, what do you determine is political? Well, did, the, the thing that we just read, was that political? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, then this is political. Political. A 27-year-old Clifton High School teacher arrested in May. Really? On charges she had sex with one of her 16-year-old male students. Shillelagh. Was indicted on Tuesday. Oh, gosh. By a Passaic County grand jury. Oh, uh, you can't corrupt a 16-year-old boy with raging hormones. On counts that include sexual assault. Assault. Official, official misconduct. Because I had raging hormones when I was 12 years old. A 16-year-old boy is, 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 was assaulted. Was she a pretty teacher? Assaulted and peppered. Salted and peppered? Was it sea salt or cheapos? She's not very attractive. Oh, then forget it. All right, it was assault then. <laughs> but But she does have. But uh, bump. She has a rack. Oh, does she have a nice body to match the rack? The jugs. A little plumpy. Eh, but a her plumpy. face, her face is hurting, right? Her face is hurting a little bit. Is she a two bagger? A bag for your head and a bag bag for her head, just in case her bag falls she off. She may not be that far, but you know it's not bad. <laughs> Two baggers. Uh, anyway, she was charged in the indictment with sexual assault, endangering the welfare of a child, oh. a mere bag of shells child. Oh, endangering oh, the welfare of a 16-year-old boy. What, what was her name? Connie Lingus. 
Uh, Kristen Leon. Kristen Leon. Yeah. And she was luring and enticing the child. Enticing. Like he, like he, like he was running away from her. Oh yeah, the the, the skid marks were on the floor. <laughs> uh, two counts of criminal sexual conduct. Counts de Leon. Contact, excuse me. Yeah. And two counts of official misconduct. Official misconduct. She was arrested on May the seventh after a joint investigation by the Passaic County Prosecutor's Office, Clifton Police. Oh my God! They must be they must be bored uh, hanging out at Dunkin' Donuts. They have to go bother this this 16 year old kid getting laid by his teacher. Which was triggered after high school administrators informed authorities of possible misconduct. Ooh, all the holy. Leon has mm. pleaded not guilty to the charges and is free on a hundred thousand dollars bail. Now, hundred thousand. She's, she's on a hundred thousand dollars bail. The prostitutes over here were five thousand. What the hell's going on? Yeah, what is going on? That's quite a disparity. The kid, she's breaking the kid in like a baseball glove. He's 16 years old, raging hormones. Why is she on $100,000 bail? And the other one's a prostitute out on $5,000 bail. That doesn't make sense. Our justice system doesn't make sense. You got a guy in Texas who wrote three bad checks. He's got doing a life sentence. You got murderers out in 10 years, or 5 years. Well, she is accused of having sexual conduct with the student in two encounters in April, including one on the school grounds. On the grounds? You mean uh, outside? Probably in the classroom. In the classroom? The first incident took place in a classroom. Where well, Leon was tutoring the boy after school. Tutoring? Uh, was it a music class? Was she was she was she playing the bagpipes? The flute. The skin flute? She was playing the flute. The bagpipes? She was a flautist. She was a flautist? <laughs> the encounter allegedly involved contact of a sexual nature. Oh shit. <laughs> In the second incident at Leon's home in Clifton. The teacher is accused of having sexual intercourse. Wow. Authorities said there was no sign that anyone was coerced. But the relationship was not legal. Oh boy. While 16 is the legal age of sexual consent in New Jersey. Yeah. It is illegal for a high school student and a teacher to have sexual relations. But aren't they, or isn't the teacher a person like anybody else, uh, an American citizen? The student is a subordinate under the teacher's charge. So if she wasn't a teacher... It would have been okay. It would have been okay? That is stupid in itself. In the past three years, hey, North Jersey schools have dealt with more than 25 arrests or convictions of teachers, coaches, or other employees yeah. accused of sexual abuse or inappropriate relations with children. Inappropriately. Authorities say they don't know the reasons for the spike in cases, but suspect greater awareness oh, and reporting of wrongdoing wrongdoing. The kid was probably happier than than a, than a clam, uh, you know, too deep to, to be caught. <laughs> School officials have said they learned of the alleged relationship between Leon and the 16-year-old boy from a teacher and student. Leon is accused of exchanging text messages with the boy. Oh. But it was said uh, when, uh, it wasn't said when the exchanges began. The defendant is not married and has no children. Oh, maybe she was uh, in need of some pipe cleaning. She was a full-time social studies teacher at Clifton High School since January 2009. She graduated from Montclair State University.
with a degree in psychology in 2008. Mm, well, hey, psychology. Hey, uh, shrinks get horny too. <laughs> <laughs>